Okay, before we move on, there was a really great question that someone asked right before the break about folk tales. And so I wanted to, to discuss that a little bit. When you're, when you're building your stories for your experiences, there are a lot of, obviously cultural heritage is, is there in the practice, in the history, in the culture, but things like song, folk tales, jokes, local jokes, and things like that can add a lot of great context and character to your storytelling. So if there, don't, I will say, don't force it, but if there are folk tales that are related to a practice that you're presenting, whether it's food or craft or a particular place, share them. People love learning about that sort of thing and those types of stories. So it's definitely appropriate to include them and it can really enrich the presentation. And an example on the, I think we have the translated version of Sisyon, right? That they're gonna get? Yeah, so the narrative that Simon showed you before for Sisyon Ceramics for their food experience, in that particular area, dairy products are very, very popular and significant, and there's actually an old traditional song that talks about how with, it's with butter that I bought my home, it's with ghee that I paid my debts, and those are the lyrics to the song. So you can look into those types of things as well, so when you're sharing about craft or food is there mus are there intersections where you can also present music and dance that relate to those practices? Stories, a lot of times with craft, historically when people were making things, they would have songs that would go along with what they were making. So adding that also gives it a little bit more layers and interest and just kind of diversifies the ways that you can present it. So I definitely encourage you when you're working through, and Simon mentioned this, when you're working through your story and you're putting, writing it down, it's not a script, but it's the information that you have. And it helps us when we write things to remember them. So going through the process of writing down all the stories that you could tell and remembering and the motifs, it'll help you so that in the moment with the traveler, you can share those experiences. Not all of them, but what makes sense for the dialogue and the conversation. And you can insert those folk tales, songs, and other aspects. Jokes are also very good too, so. All right, take it away, Simon. Okay, so we're going to spend, kind of building on what Hallie just said, we're going to spend a little bit more time to essentially finalize your, your concepts. I know many of you have kind of gone most of them probably where you, where you want them, but we want to um, spend a little bit more time just thinking about the stories, the traditions that Hallie just mentioned, anything else that you'd like to really deepen the experience that you have and based on what we were just discussing earlier before the break, what you may want to integrate into your concept um, to, to deepen it, to flesh it out, to kind of give it a little bit more context and, and depth for the visitor. Um, and then also, based on the storytelling, the flow of that. So as, as Hallie just mentioned, you know, the intro, the, the specific stops and, and transitions and stories that you want to do and how people would kind of flow through your experience. Um, go back to them, just have a quick think about if there's anything else you, you want to, you, that's missing that you want to include in those. And then on the last page, which we didn't really cover yesterday, um, although I think some of you have, have kind of looked at it and maybe filled it out, there's two components. One is cost, and we're not going to get into a lot of the, the kind of details of, of developing the kind of business side, the cost and, and pricing side of your experience. But it is very important to think about as you start to conceptualize and, and kind of put together your experience. So there's two pieces of cost that are important. And again, this is more just kind of to think about as you move forward. They're the variable costs. So they're things that will, will have a cost to you for offering that experience, whether it's materials, uh, food, if you're doing a food experience, an individual who might be a guide or an interpreter for that experience, um, transport, if you're moving people from one place to another, those are all variable costs that are specific to offering that experience. And then there are other costs that you wanna make sure you wrap in. So your overall budget, your salary, your uh, electricity, your gas, you know, other things that maybe co cross multiple experiences, multiple tourists that you host. Um, 
But pieces like that that you need to think about as you're kind of crafting um, your ultimately your pricing strategy for this. At the end of the day today, we'll talk a little bit about connecting to market and I'll talk a bit about pricing strategy. But again, it's going to be fairly overview, but I, I have cost on this sheet partly because it's a very important thing to think about as you dive into this. And if you have any questions about that, we can, we can chat about it a bit more today. Um, and then the last piece, which is also important, is this workshop is designed to kind of stimulate ideas, thoughts, and start to get those down on paper and, and kind of a plan of what you want to create. But it's also important to identify what you need to get from here to the point where you're actually hosting a visitor. So if you can spend a couple of minutes, you know, we'll have five, maybe 10 minutes to just flesh out any final pieces with your concepts. If you have any questions, raise your hand, ask questions, we can talk about those now. And then uh, after lunch, we'll actually, we'll leave you with your concepts, but we'll wanna take pictures of your concepts or, or scan your concepts essentially so that the project can follow up. Um, so if you can just work on those now, I'll give you a couple of minutes. If you have questions, I can come around and, and we, can, we can chat specifically, okay? Okay, so just as people are, are kind of finishing up, um, can anyone give me some example or some of the needs that you may have identified in terms of moving your experience from today, from the concept you put on um, down in front of you, to ultimately the point where you have visitors turning up and you're, you're operating your experience. Any, anyone put their hand up, just want to give a couple of examples of needs that you've identified through this process for creating your experience? Needs like, um, so things like marketing or additional, you know, trainings or in the back. Um, Hallie, do you? So maybe the biggest needs for the museum is branding and marketing. Uh, I just talked uh, with some of the uh, touristic uh, uh, agency and lots of people doesn't want to come to museum. So it's the big issue for us. And that's why I think it's big ne uh, it's need for this uh, to do on maybe month level some promotion, but not only promotion on websites and Facebook, but uh, in whole country. Uh, we need, I think that we need one uh, maybe station where can we go and promote our uh, workshops, our exhibition, and so on. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So just just to dive into that a little bit deeper, do you have, ah, for the museum example, do you have uh, materials already and it's more getting them out? Or is it the, the materials like a brochure or even website or something like that? Uh, we have a website, but we don't have material. Uh, we don't have brochure. Uh, for each uh, exhibition, we have a unique uh, brochure, panels, uh, you know, pamphlets, but we don't have unique uh, to uh, get into touristic uh, community with that. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Anyone else, any other needs that you guys have identified that you think can help you create these experiences? Just an example, we'll just kind of pick a couple essentially. So, yeah. <laughs> For the development of the creative tourism and cultural tu tourism, uh, the most important is uh, support, actually. And uh, a little uh, a bit more uh, public partnership or things that need to be realized uh, on the field. That's the, the most, of course, promotion. Yeah, as well. So, so on, in support, um, is there, like, can you give a specific example to kind of what support? Is it specific training? Is it specific, you know, something else? Implementation on the field. Uh, more creativity of the uh, administration things and uh, support, like uh, I even investing, etc. 
in the actual experience in terms of development of the creative the development tourism. Development of that experience. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Maybe one other before we uh, move on. Anyone else? Could you mind just grabbing that the microphone just so everyone can hear? Thanks. Uh, hello. Because uh, now we are making new tours, but uh, what about if, if I already have one and I want to maybe update it? Yeah, so for that, um, these concepts are obviously kind of new, yeah, as you say, like a new experience that you want to do. There's also, yeah, especially as kind of you, you already are offering a suite of different activities. So yes, there's, for those, they may not need as much, they probably wouldn't, but they may need specific things, marketing, maybe one, um, yeah, something else specific that is, will help it get from where it is now to something else. So yes, those, I would, um, I would probably just use a different sheet and just kind of write down, yeah, this already exists, so you, you may not need to fill out everything, but these are needs for, for existing tourism experiences. Because we, overall, um, obviously we wanted you to focus on your concepts on, on kind of the whole process in terms of something new, but the, in the need section, if there's other existing products and you need, you know, A and B, whatever that is, um, list those as well. Um, and then also the other question I have is you, you all sitting here, you've been yeah, very, Simon. oh, I'm sorry. Ja se izvinjavam, teo bi kolegici iz muzeja. Sorry, one sec. I apologize, I would like, thank you very much, but I apologize. Uh, I would like to suggest something to my colleague from the museum. So in the context of our workshop and wishing for my agency to have marketing activities and regardless of, of who's going to pay for what uh, in this catalog I included the museum as a facility of the city of Sarajevo and Bosnia and Herzegovina so I would like to say that we should network more closely and cooperate more closely when it comes to marketing. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And yes, I mean the you know some Obraste. of you. Are... A question. Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, I would kindly ask you to bear with me. Uh, the association that I work for has been working to recognize widely the artistic uh, segment in the city, but the country as well. So this is something that we've been doing for the last 20 years, over hundreds of promotions and dozens of festivals. Now you put us here on the wall, Art Fest, you put in the category of festivals. So Art Fest is a global idea for the entire city that would, its stage is the entire city. Now, you mentioned participation of local community. So this is what we want to see. So we have a city with three governmental levels. What we want is for each and every one of them and other stakeholders to see their interest in working on contribution and promotion of this art fest in Sarajevo. So everything that we heard today, all these ideas, can be integrated into this art fest. It would make everyone's life easier. The marketing portion would uh, be done through one project, not 15 projects. All of those beneficiaries of the project and participants of the project would 
have the technical, logistical, uh, promotional, marketing parts covered, so it would be part of this global project, Art Fest, that would take place throughout the city, depending on the suitable location for the given idea. So it's a rather complex idea, but very much doable if we have international community in involved. Basically, if we have you helping us to implement this uh, idea, you know, we have this um, neglecting of, of arts, of culture, by the institutions, by the wider uh, public, and for us, for the project to be implemented, we need you as a project to help us in this. Now, there's a couple of preconditions for the implementation of the idea, one of them uh, being supporting us with just one km. This would be encouragement and stimulus for others to participate and contribute yet another 1km for us to raise funds and be able to, on the financial side, implement the project. Right, thank you. Um, so yeah, I mean, broadly, I think there's, and the, the project, part of the reason for this concept development is this is the first stage, right? So there's activities that the program can do that will support either collective, kind of network type activities. Um, so you both mentioned at the back that there's a need for this kind of networking and connection among all the different tourism experiences. Um, but there's also some specific pieces that you may all need that are relate to your specific business or, or, or activity. So, um, so yes, I agree. There's there's that need um, at the kind of broader connection level, and then there's also what I'd like to, if you could put in your concepts, just your specific needs for your um, your tourism experience. On, I do have a question actually for the um, for the art fest. Is it? Is it a festival in terms of its one kind of time period, you know, a week or a weekend or, or, or something like that? Or is it um, something that's called more ongoing, you know, throughout the year, summer season? Well, this would be a festival taking place for 10 days in the city, including all segments of arts, uh, meaning public exhibitions, public concerts, um, workshops uh, for painting, drawing, uh, training. So this is the first phase that we envisage a festival lasting 10 days in different locations throughout the city. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, and for that, I would say that, you know, that in itself is an experience. Obviously, it connects multiple and many of the other experiences, but yeah, a, as an experience yourself, that's um, a kind of finite offer that would be a great way for people to work together to promote their overall, off, you know, overall offer and, and what people can do, um, both in an individual business, but also how all those individual businesses connect together. Um, I would also challenge you in a way to, to take another step, not necessarily on your own, but with others as, as you all as a group and others that may not be here, in that that same principle also is important at the broader annual level, right? You know, you working together, you know, each individual business, it's always impossible whether you're here or whether you're, you know, an established tourism business in the U.S., it's very difficult as an individual business to promote yourself. You have limited budget, limited time. You do want some of your own promotional materials, obviously, but this, this idea that a uh, gentleman in the back suggested and um, multiple people have suggested is coming together as a network where you can promote yourselves together through a festival and then also even a broader level to the, to the market throughout the year is critical. I, yeah, that may, may exist in some forms, but it's something that 
we, can, we'll, we will be diving into a little bit deeper, but also um, continue on, hopefully, even beyond, beyond this concept, because you're stronger as a group than you are as individuals. So um, thank you. I appreciate that. Just moving on, I, I did have a question. As you finalize your experiences, I have one question for you. Are they on the wall? Because the, you know, the, the items that were put up there, if you haven't put your experience up there, we'd love you to go and put it up um, either now or maybe as we break, because we're going to break in a minute, not right now. Um, but as, if, you, if it's not already listed on the wall, please write down the name of your experience and stick it up there um, as we break for the next section. So that's, sorry, did you have a, you have a question? There, there's more posted, the green, if it's a new product, would be, there's more down there. So if, you, if it's not listed on the wall already, I'm sorry? If it's listed, that's fine. We just want to make sure it's, it's captured. So if it's not, if it's listed, you're fine, you can leave it there. If it's not listed and it's a new idea that's not listed on the wall there, as we, as we transition into the next section, please just, uh, just put it up. Um, so the next piece we're going we're gonna to do is I want you all to, to, to break up. It's kind of noisy outside, so I'd stay in this room unless you as a group really want to kind of separate yourself and go and do something else. But for the next 20 minutes or so, I want you to, it doesn't really matter you, you know, who's in your group, but break up into groups of five or six, and each of you practice pitching your experience to each other. So I want you to sit, you know, um, just kind of group your chairs in different areas, come together, we don't want too many, so five or six people, so I can break you up or you can do it yourself. Um, and each individual, each one of you, will talk about your experience with the target of trying to do it within 60 seconds. Now, I know that's difficult, but everyone else in your group, you've got to time them and try and keep them on the, on the time. I have 90 seconds here, so we'll, we'll go with 90 seconds if it, if it goes to that. But just think about a concise way that you can describe your product and then test it with others in your group. And then I'd like the others in the group to then give some feedback on, on you know, if you went too long, what to include, what to not to include, how to kind of refine that. And as you're presenting that, I want you to think about including the following things. The name, location, and length of your, and I'll leave this slide up so you can see it, but the name, location, length of your tourism experience, length in terms of it's a two-hour activity or it's a whole day activity. Um, description, obviously, kind of what's the story? What's the overall description of what I'm offering? Um, something the visitor will learn along the way, that takeaway that is a key piece that they'll, they'll learn and be able to tell others um, of coming out of that experience. And then, ideally, when you're describing, think back to those principles of storytelling. So, how it connects to a visitor, how you can engage learning through the, for a visitor. So think about some of those storytelling techniques as you, as you kind of uh, present it to a, to a group. So right now, uh, is there any questions on that first? Because I just kind of ran through it. I will leave this slide up. Nope, okay. So can you all break up? Essentially, what I would do is roughly where you're all sitting, if you can get into groups of five or six, pull your chairs around into a circle or semicircle. And then I ask each person to just to present and then give a little feedback as a group and then go to the next person in your group. So we'll spend 20 minutes doing that. Yep, that's perfect there. You guys kind of here in the corner, guys in the middle, maybe break up into three groups and then a couple at the back there. If you have any questions, just shout. Okay, so you've had, had a little practice in, in presenting your experience to your, your colleagues in the group next to you. What I'd like to do now is ask you all to do it another time. I know it's a little repetitive, but you've obviously only talked to those within your smaller group, and part of what we're trying to do here is connect everyone. So hopefully you're all at a stage, again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but 
at the stage where you can present your, your at least your idea, what you want to create, and, and what the kind of takeaway as a visitor, for a visitor, will be um, uh, in the experience. So lunch is at one o'clock. We have about, well, 25 minutes to do that. There's a lot of you in the room, so we really need to focus on that, like 60, ideally 60 second um, pitch, and then we'll go around the room. I'll, uh, have you got a microphone over there? Okay, I'll, I'll pass this microphone to start off, and then we'll just go down the room. Um, I'll go and grab another one. But again, you, you all right? No, oh, thanks. Um, so again, just, just think about the name of your experience very quickly, where it is and how long it'll be, a very brief description. Um, my friend here described it very well. Think about it as an ad on TV. How are you going to get that message across in 30 or 60 seconds to all of you here? And what we also help by doing this is to continue to create these connections, to see who can connect to who, because in the afternoon, we're going to get into more itinerary development on how you, all of your experiences connect within the landscape. So we can start anywhere, really. Everyone's going to do it. OK. OK. So my concept is about uh, uh, visiting, about getting visitors to Ilija which is uh, 12 kilometers from Sarajevo, and it is, in fact, the place when Sarajevo originated because it has a large and very famous hot water uh, spring used since Roman and pre-Roman times for healing, and especially during winter times. So uh, our project or our you know, uh, concept would be getting uh, not only foreigners but locals as well to Ilija to spend to to visit that archaeological site there is a uh, foundations excavated foundations of uh, a large home uh, Roman domus uh, villa and also a hospitalium so they could have a short history lesson maybe in some traditional uh, in some Roman clothes or something and after that they would spend they would go to a lunch to a nearby hotel. So we have all the facilities there, which they, there they could taste, you know, local food. And uh, after that, they would spend uh, some time, at least two hours, probably the rest of the day, in the actual, not actual, but uh, uh, modern uh, uh, hot pools where they can really have some relaxed time. And those pools are on the same spot where those Roman springs were. So it's like the continuation of the tradition and the continuation of European tradition because, you know, where you have Roman or Greek settlement, it is counted as Europe. Where you don't have them, not really. So it's like tradition and modernity at the same time. Yeah, like history and gastronomy and that uh, part when you, you know, actually go into the pool and relax for... Thank you. Okay, we're just going to go, go around, try and keep it again to 90 seconds if possible. <laughs> wow. 60. 60. 60. Okay, so I envisaged a shop uh, waving workshop and a shop and getting tourists in this uh, shops where women would make um, carpets manually and they would also include like a standing exhibition of handmade clothes with a small section with souvenirs something you can actually buy but also giving the opportunity for the visitors to take part in the production of these clots of material. So if I'm done, this is 60 seconds. Hello. Uh, the project which I want to share with you, it's named uh, Kiss from Bosnia. Uh, I made one very nice uh, product which 
called bracelet, chakra bracelet, uh, which can be made by Bosnian stones, which can be dig up here in Bosnia. Also, we can use another uh, stones from other places. This product is very simple, very uh, healthy, original. It takes five to 10 minutes uh, if tourist wants to, to make by themselves. Uh, this is very original souvenir, uh, very colorful, uh, it, even for the men and the ladies, children. Uh, also, I made a very nice picture, which you can see the, the ladies' lips and the, and the, ch and the chakras. And uh, tourists can bring with themselves very nice uh, handcraft, which he can uh, share on the social media. For example, kiss from Sarajevo or kiss from other cities and we can share those from all other cities in the world. Uh, this product can be very easily displayed in any place, in the hotel, touristic places, and show and sell on very easy way. And uh, these words we, we will separate in all, uh, not separate, spread in all world very easily, and it will be very good advertising for Bosnia, actually for all of us. Well, a tourist coming to Bosnia and Herzegovina can visit via Ferrata. That's been um, implemented two years ago in Romania Mountain. This is a new experience. And each and every adventure tourist, uh, tourists uh, um, that like adrenaline can actually take this route via Ferrata to experience the nature, to experience the energy, the scenery, the views, and then can have a positive experience visiting mountain Romania and communicate to their friends, followers, and um, attract new visitors here. Thank you. Now, given that uh, I work in a school for tourism, so waiters, chefs, etc., we have a city uh, kitchen and also different uh, specialized uh, classrooms depending on the subject so we can um, raise awareness amongst uh, the students on the need to preserve the local traditions we can also connect uh, with uh, other schools from other uh, countries and uh, introduce them to our traditions, for example, um, preparing local dishes, urmashica or sadman, which is dolma essentially. So then get our students to show these visiting students from other countries uh, show them how to make it, to try it, and then they would exchange experiences and tell local stories. Thank you. Good day. So the same as my colleague, because we are sitting one next to each other, our task uh, is to teach children to transmit knowledge. And since I work in an agricultural school, uh, we teach basics in biology and we are very much focused on tradition lately. So here we are talking about different species and I actually decided to talk about two species of flowers that have been forgotten. We are trying to preserve 
these flowers to bring them back to our homes. Anaranthus is the flower I'm talking about. It's a sort of pseudo crop. And you can find some products made of um, that plant in DM and it is good for vegetarians, very nutritious and very precious. And the other flower is uh, called Dragoljub in Bosnian and I was puzzled to actually realize that children do not know what this flower is and in Bosnia we call it Latifica is also a plant that is very nutritious and very healthy and in the ancient times different beverages were made of this plant uh, or it was also used as an ingredient in some cakes and recently I've read that globally this plant is having increasingly big importance throughout the world and since we are teachers and we invest in our future. We have a Facebook page so we can communicate this project of ours to the wider public. So, whatever the kit presented, and certainly we would uh, provide seeds for these plants as well. Good day. Once again, uh, we are here on behalf of the touristic organization from Sokolets, and uh, we should actually present the entire offer of our uh, municipality, and we need to present only one activity. And since we are uh, obliged to preserve tradition, my idea is related to the women's associations preserving the tradition of this region. Uh, in terms of uh, producing goravia, which is a very healthy cake, traditional cake from Bosnia, you can um, take it. You can take it with you when you go camping uh, because it can uh, last for 15 days. It is also made of very healthy ingredients, uh, ingredients including uh, honey. You can also add some other ingredients uh, such as uh, lemon, um, coconut, flour, and with a cup of milk or a good cup of tea as a wonderful breakfast during camping. And uh, what's specific for this cake is that it is carved in a special way by stamping it with a flower that was actually transferred from mothers to daughters. So that is very characteristic for this cake related to Sarajevo Romania region and its role in the history was related to family patrons celebration because it was usable that uh, all guests uh, after drinking the third cup of uh, some beverage uh, would put an apple on the top of that glass uh, and then or that cake and then they would wish good health to every uh, everybody there good day everyone in terms of my idea, um, this is not an idea, this is a sort of a project. It is based on an interactive uh, map of Bosnia and Herzegovina that would include cultural and historical monuments. So, in, a, in, addition, in addition to its purpose for the tourists and citizens, uh, it would also have an educational purpose for our teachers and professors and uh, it would be 
posted in a web page. Uh, we would also create an application um, of that map and it could be used in museums and galleries. Good day, I'm coming from History Museum of Bosnia and Herzegovina. We are dealing with the Second World War and the uh, socialism era, uh, starting from 1992 to end the period from 1992 to modern history. Currently, we are talking about Sarajevo and the siege. And my idea is how to attract tourists is to organize different workshops that would be showing uh, life during the war. So we would have a broken TV uh, that would be attached to a battery to show the current generations the way we used to live during the war and to tell them how difficult the wartime was and that it mustn't happen ever again. Uh, recently we had a Ukrainian tourist and when he looked at the pictures that we showed him, he actually realized that the same thing was going on in uh, Ukraine at the moment. So the, our primary goal uh, is to say that war must not happen again ever. Welcome to Bosnia and Herzegovina, which, is, which has an exceptional nature, lakes, rivers, mountains, canyons, gorges, virgin forests, um, historical periods starting from uh, Roman, Ottoman, Austro-Hungarian and the socialist times uh, where we had the, the best organized Olympic Games um, to date. Welcome to different cities and destinations where we had two world wars where we can learn lessons for something that must not happen ever again. You can also see different uh, tunnels, so one of uh, which was built by Tito, the other built during the last war. You can also see cultural institutions and a number of museums in Sarajevo, Mostar. There are unique caves with flora and fauna and so on with exceptional warm and welcoming people that are welcoming you with open heart trying to make all your wishes come true. Good day everyone, I'm coming from Art Kucha of Sevda. We are dealing with many things, um, but I will focus on one project, which are, uh, and that is the workshops for uh, students and tourists coming to Sarajevo. So when coming to Art House of Sevda, which is uh, located uh, in Daira, built in uh, the 17th century, uh, you will get, uh, you will realize, uh, you will see the life that uh, used to, um, that, that was actually going on at the time. You will also be able to see um, different uh, song players, song writers, uh, you can hear different uh, songs, you can try uh, play it yourself or sing it yourself after that. Uh, uh, in a closed uh, space of our building, you can enjoy a uh, gastronomic offer that was produced according to traditional um, traditional meals. We also organize culinary um, workshops uh, starting from uh, tuva, tuva here, bakla baklava or different juices that are traditionally made. You can also taste those juices or take them with you. And that is one of the projects that I uh, find the most important for the presentation today. We also organize the nights uh, of uh, Sabda, nights of traditional songs, uh, ex exhibitions of books and so on. Good day everyone.
I'm coming from the Associations for Culture, Nova Seattleist, and I will present our Art Fest project to you. It would be held uh, in different places around the cities. So the most attractive locations are Vilsonovo Shetelište and uh, Skenderia Plateau. There we could hold different exhibitions, concerts, uh, book promotions uh, and everything what has been already mentioned here, such as crafts, uh, gastro gastronomy, folklore. This is our opportunity to present the entire culture of ours and to present arts and artworks that we have at the moment and that would be also an opportunity who, for all those who cannot organize such event by themselves to present themselves at our events and to pres so that uh, some new young artists can be presented. This is not going to be implemented unless some um, American people help us. I'm coming of Gazihozdrev Bay Museum. What was specific and interesting for us as a cultural institution uh, to present uh, was the dervishes dance. You've heard of it probably, uh, especially about dervishes. They are very popular in Istanbul and Turkey. And one of their rituals which is very specific and very interesting for visitors, especially those not coming from this region and Europe, is this special dance of theirs. So dervishes were people who were spinning around and they have a very specific type of clothes um, they do it with music playing in the background, so that would be one of the activities that could fit in our cultural institutions, because we are rather a specific institution of a religious um, character, of a religious nature. Good day, I'm, my name is Sumeya. And I'm the owner of the tourist agency of IMS Tours. We are dealing with adventure and health tourism. And in, you know, we would organize an excursion in Herzegovina, actually in Chapina. And in the suburban area of Chapina, we would visit uh, a aloe vera field where our visitors will be able to pick the plants and prepare a gel against wrinkles or detoxication of your body. So this process would take around one hour and they will be able to see uh, the, the field, they will be able to pick the plants, uh, they would uh, be given instructions on how to uh, prepare the gel and uh, then they could actually buy that gel for some small money or leave it there for the hosts and then we will visit uh, the river Trebežat where we could uh, do kayak safari and within this excursion that would take approximately four hours you will be able to get an experience and you will be able to experience Herzegovina in a very special way, not a classical excursion way. Good day. Dobar dan. Uh, coming from the museum of the, of the one of the capital city of Europe, I have this pleasure to announce a project that is quite unique, not just for uh, this country, but also for the Balkans area as well. 
Uh, I don't know how much uh, you are familiar that uh, Museum of Sarajevo has its five of its own departments, which depicts various aspects of our uh, heritage, like, for example, sociology, archaeology, ethnology, and so on. Uh, together with our uh, highly skilled guides, interpreters, and other museum staff, uh, we are planning to have a uh, have, uh, one uh, year, uh, year project which is involved, or to be precise, uh, uh, pointed uh, towards understanding and deeply appreciating our cultural heritage. Of course, this doesn't just mean that you are going to see and you know, explore our museums. That also includes visiting other places that are very important for our, uh, for our city, and also in, it includes numerous workshops. Of course, if you have any questions regarding this project uh, you are, or uh, any ideas, you are more than, of course, to inquire us and contact us. Thank you. I present the project name Art Corner. It is take place in one corner in the center of the Visoko. Uh, it is take uh, uh, it can be taken one day or maybe two or few days depends of the group. Uh, it is workshop about uh, painting but on natural materials like woods, stones, uh, silk, um, and everything that group actually uh, desire. And uh, those uh, products and souvenirs can be uh, painted like uh, uh, maybe motifs of the Bosnian uh, carpets, maybe pyramids on it, depends what the group also desire. And they can buy and bring that uh, souvenir with them. And specific is because it's on the field and among the Bosnian pyramids and uh, uh, provides the deep contact and connection, not only 3D, but even 5D uh, uh, in the experience. All the yes, all the sense. Thank you. First of all, I don't know who has been translating. It was translated as a mosque in uh, here on the wall. We have uh, translated Jam, uh, Shamia as mosque, and it's a shawl, it's not a mosque. So the experience that I would like to talk about, given that I'm coming from cultural uh, center and we are managing Ostrozet, so we would like to switch to immersive tourism by rebranding this shawl, that is a traditional shawl from this area, depending on the age of the woman. We had Alaja that was worn by old, Ladies uh, and then mid age middle age ladies would uh, wear um, another type of shawl, while completely different shawl would be worn by uh, young ladies. So we would like to rebrand these shawl and to uh, have a workshop uh, where the visitors could uh, decorate these uh, shawls by themselves uh, that would keep them um, a long, for a longer period of time uh, there and uh, we could organize also some other activities within this workshop. My name is Indira and I'm the owner of the uh, theater.pub brand. So how a candle evaluate, uh, um, evolved uh, from a lightning object to souvenir or promotional material you will learn in our workshop while you are 
producing your own decorative candle in your own in the colors you cho choose visitors will uh, learn what natural um, candles are what materials are used to make such candles and they will be able uh, to make their own candles using um, the uh, waste that uh, from from the candles they have already used uh, Hello, I'm Fatima, uh, owner of Lily Travel Agency. Uh, today I would like to present you Sephardic tour in the old town of Sarajevo. Um, as, you, as you probably know, uh, Bosnia, especially uh, city Sarajevo, has a very rich history. And uh, Sephardic Jews uh, came from Andalusia, from Spain, in the 15th century. They uh, they brought their culture, their music, and uh, they were living happily and safely in Bosnia until the Second World War. So today we will bring you to see the Jewish Museum in the old town and hear about, mostly about the uh, Holocaust. Then we will bring you to Sephardi uh, Synagogue, actually uh, Ash Ashkenazi Synagogue. Uh, during the Austro-Hungarian Imperium, uh, also Ashkenazi Jews came from Europe. So in that synagogue, you will be able to see the rituals, you will be able to try kosher food and engage uh, with uh, uh, Jews from Sarajevo and hear uh, a lot of uh, stories. Uh, if there is chance, we will bring you to the National Museum to see the Haggadah. Haggadah is, uh, there are only two uh, books uh, made uh, and one of them is here in Sarajevo. After that, we will bring you to Jewish Cemetery and that's one of the uh, biggest uh, Jewish cemetery in, in Europe. So enjoy. <laughs> 